Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about Cloudflare Tunnels. Now, this is a free offering from Cloudflare that enters no need to open ports. It does not expose your public IP address. It works behind NAT. It works behind CG NAT. And you're probably thinking, well, how do they offer that for free? And is it too good to be true? Is this really that easy to host my servers without exposing any of those things and creating those extra complexities of having to deal with certificates? Yeah, it's actually free. Now, why is it free? Best speculation is Cloudflare wants you signing up for services, so they hope to upsell you on more services. Now, there's a couple of prerequisite here. You do need a domain. Now, you don't have to transfer your domain to Cloudflare, although that is an option. They will handle domain registration. You can register domains to Cloudflare. I simply took my name servers for one of my domains. The one we're using in this demo is going to be Lawrence.video, and I just swapped over the DNS settings for it pretty simple to do. My domain registrar is hover. So you just go in there and change out whoever you want the name servers to be. Next, you need to have a server that can run the Cloudflare tunnel server or tunnel client. This client can run as a Docker, can run on Mac, Windows, Linux. It can run as a standalone daemon in Debian Linux. So there's a lot of different options that we'll talk about when we're using the Docker one specifically. And you need to have wherever that server is, the ability to talk to the other servers or the servers on that system that you want to talk to, to broker that connection. Now, what I mean by that, and I'll have a layout that we'll be covering of how that works. The server that you load this on, I have Docker on it, and I have a few other Docker containers. So you can talk directly to those other Docker containers, but it can also reach out laterally and move to the other servers that it has access to. And that's something that matters a lot for this final prerequisite, and that is trusting Cloudflare. The Cloudflare dashboard talks to the Cloudflare server to say which ports seem to be open and which services should be exposed. If someone else were to take control over that dashboard, it would be able to send down commands and say, expose things that maybe you didn't want to expose. That's just something you should keep in mind when you're thinking about how the security works. It's not a reason not to do it. It's just understanding who's in those trust boundaries when you set up services. Final note is about how the encryption works in terms of the data that may pass through a local service back out to the Cloudflare cloud. Because Cloudflare is working as a reverse proxy, any data that goes through that reverse proxy could be seen. So whatever is sent over those connections, because they're terminating the SSL for you via their tool, there's a way to pick that data out of it via that tool itself. Now, the tool being open source means we should be able to see how they're doing it and look at it, but it's just one more thing to put in consideration and why Trust Cloudflare is part of the final prerequisite because they're all in your trust circle and so is any data that will be traversing it. The consideration you may want is to limit where these servers live and what else is on there. So if you have something that absolutely should never be public exposed, you may not want to have it within reach of where this Cloudflare service runs. I just want to throw this out there. There's not any reason I have not to trust Cloudflare. Not that I don't think they've done a good job of security. It's just always being aware of who you have in your circles of trust when you're building out technology. Now, before we get started with this tutorial, let's first. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. All right, let's start by covering some of the basics of how this lab is set up and the layout and the goals. So we want some service.lawrence.video to be accessible publicly with a certificate. The way you would do that with, for example, HA proxy would be to load HA proxy on a PFSense firewall. I've got a whole video on that, set it up and then point it to the services that are running over here on this Ubuntu server that's at 192.168.1.4 and it's running Docker with a few different containers on it. The other option might be to run a reverse proxy in Docker as well and then have certificates that then go through here and you put forward so you could expose the service and you have to make sure the DNS for that service is pointing there. All of this though comes with the 
Well, problem of it's going right through your firewall and you're exposing your public IP address and you're wondering why that is bad. Well, generally, if you're a home user building your home lab, you may not have a very robust ISP that can deal with any type of DDoSing that may occur. This is a problem that you can ask Jeff Gearling about. He has little videos about DDoSing and his setup and mitigations he's done about it. Back to the topic here, though, let's talk about a simpler way of handling this and a simpler way of handling the certificates. So here is the same idea, some service.launch.video reaching out to the Cloudflare Edge. The Cloudflare Edge sits between you and the services. So the tool is going to run, and we're going to run this in Docker, but it can run as a daemon, it can run as a service in Windows, it can run on Mac. The Cloudflare connecting tool is going to be running on this Ubuntu server at that same IP address of 192.168.1.4. It's just going to pass through the firewall like any other service reaching out to the internet. So there's nothing we have to do with the firewall to configure it. If the firewall IP address changes or if it's behind CG NAT or double NAT, doesn't really matter as long as it can reach the Cloudflare servers publicly. From there, anything that this particular server has lateral access to. So if it is able to reach out to, and we'll do this in a demo here, this Synology server at 192.168.60.15, then no problem. It's going to be able to reach out to that server and broker the connection back out to the Cloudflare Edge. And then any clients trying to access it are always accessing via the Cloudflare Edge and not exposing your public IP address. And it doesn't matter if your firewall IP address changes. This can change dynamically and it resynchronizes quite fast because the Cloudflare tool is always reaching out to their servers to let it know where it's at and it can broker those new connections. So it's not a big deal if your IP address changes. Now let's talk about functionally how to get this set up. Now for simplicity, we're only going to be talking about using HTTP HTTP and HTTPS, but there are actually more services this Cloudflare tunnel can support, and there's a lot more it can do. But this will get you started with the common things of just exposing things that you maybe want to self-host that are web-based services. So this is the documentation. Plenty of it, lots to read. We're going to be using the documentation as a reference, but I'm not going to go through every detail in here, but they have plenty of use cases and lots of details. The other thing you're going to need to set up is the Cloudflare Zero Trust dashboard. I'm going to skip setting that up. It's really easy. You just go through the basics of registering an account with Cloudflare for that. And also, as I said in the beginning of the video, there's an assumption that the DNS has already been done for whatever domain you have. In this case, Lawrence.video. Now we're over here in the Cloudflare Zero Trust dashboard. If it's your first time signing up for it, uh, just scroll down to the bottom. Always look for the free option that they have. We're going to go here to access. We're going to go here to tunnels. And we're going to create our first tunnel. Tom's Tunnel for YouTube. Sounds like a great name for this. Save tunnel. And don't worry, this will be deleted by the time I post this publicly. Therefore, anything that you see in here, I'm aware of, uh, could cause a security risk. As in for you, because if you add your service to my dashboard, that would be really interesting because I'd be able to map things in here to whatever services you may have. But here, store your token carefully. This command includes a server token. Allow the connector to anyone. Anyone access token will be able to run the tunnel. That's the point that they're making here. We have a Debian option, 64-bit, 32-bit ARM options. I've tried it with the Debian daemon. Works perfectly fine. Didn't have any problems with it. Because we're running Portainer and a few other things in Docker, I thought, hey, why not do it in Docker? A lot of you do run Docker images in the home lab because, well, they kind of make things easy, I'll admit. So we have Docker run Cloudflare latest tunnel no auto update run and here's the token. We're going to go here and copy this, but we're going to add a couple things before we paste it into the server. But let's go ahead and paste it in and then add those extra parameters. So right after Docker run, we're going to add dash D dash dash name Cloudflare tunnel. Give it a nice name dash dash restart unless stopped and then the rest. It's a really simple add, but what this does is runs it in daemon mode, names it Cloudflare Tunnel, and says restart unless stopped. This means it will automatically restart or start whenever you restart the server that is running this. Then let's go over here and see if it's up and running. Go here to the portainer. And hey, look, there's our Cloudflare. If we click on the logs icon on portainer, there we go. We can see it. We can see the logs. Makes it really easy. If you're not familiar with portainer, check it out. It's free. It's also a Docker image itself. It does making managing Docker images really easy. All right, let's go back over here and hit next. Now let's create the different domains that we want, the subdomains, if we will. 
So I have Uptime Kuma running, and I have it running right here. If we click on Uptime Kuma and the port, we see it's running at 192.168.1.4.3001. So it's on the same server that this is running at, so we know it has access to it. So let's go back over here, and we'll call it Uptime Kuma Demo YT for YouTube. Now, you could not put the subdomain and just have it right there where it would be Lawrence.video, but we're going to have several services, so I'm going to create a series of subdomains. So Lawrence.video, the type is HTTP because this is a not secure standard HTTP, not HTTPS connection. Let's go over here, paste in the IP address. We don't want HTTP in front of it, so it's 192.168.1.4 colon 3001. Nothing else we really have to do to get this working. Save Tom's tunnel. Now we see that the tunnel status is healthy because it's up and running in Docker. There's the origin IP of this tunnel. Now this is what's kind of cool is you can see this public IP. Don't worry, it's not my public IP. It's just one of them I have set up here. But if your IP changes where this is coming from, this updates really fast. Matter of fact, if we go over here to the portainer and we're gonna hit stop on this one. So we'll take down the Cloudflare tunnel. It's exited. We click here and click back. We can see this tunnel is down. We go back over here and we'll restart that tunnel. So we'll hit start. It started. Look at the logs. It's already registered with it. So if we go here real quick, just click off it and click on it again. Healthy. It's right back up and running. So the restart times on it is really fast. Now, the next thing I want to do is go in and check to see if the system we set up with this public host name, this Uptime Kuma demo is working. So we're taking this public IP address, which is going to wrap over to this particular instance of Uptime Kuma. So we'll go ahead and click on it. Brings us right back up to the dashboard here. And now we can log into my Uptime Kuma. By the way, if we click here and we say connection is secure, certificate is valid. It gave us a wildcard certificate here. So now I didn't have to do anything and it's brokering the connection. Of note, as I mentioned earlier, because this is not secure, but the security is being added by the Cloudflare tool, the communication is going from this painter instance, which also runs on the same Cloudflare server at 192.168.1.4. It's brokering the connection. So any visibility for plain text traffic is going to be occurring within this particular system, not over the public internet. From the connection from this server outgoing, once it reaches in the Cloudflare tool, it's encrypted all the way through to the endpoint where we have it right here. But we can also add trust for things that are internally using HTTPS. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add another public host name. And we're gonna do this one with the Synology Surveillance Station. And this is my Synology Surveillance Station model DVA. So we'll give it that same name. This does have an HTTPS connection. So this has got a self-signed certificate and we'll pull it up real quick to show you what it looks like here. It says not secure, but we're at the 192.168.60.15.5001. And yes, this server does have access to that. Go back over here. So we'll go ahead and put that IP address in here. HTTPS. One more thing, because it's a self-signed certificate, we're going to go here to additional application settings, TLS, and we want to skip verification. If you don't do this, you'll end up a little bit of headache trying to figure out why it won't connect. And what you're doing is skipping validating whether or not that self-signed certificate is valid because it's not. That way, when it talks to it, we can just skip that verification, save host name. So now we have an HTTPS connection, which means the connection from this server at 192.168.1.4 to 192.168.60.15.5001, that connection across my local network is encrypted, then it's encrypted again, and that information is passed along to Cloudflare via their edge, and we should be able to click on this and log into the Synology DBA. So I can do my full login, log in with my username, my password, view my cameras, everything else on here. And I've not done any public exposing of any of my systems. And it's easy enough for me to, you know, quickly change that DNS setting. And if you looked up the DNS for any of these, let's do that real quick. What we ran is a dig command surveillance station DVA dot launch dot video. And the public IP addresses it shows are the 104.21.72 and the 172.0. 67187 because it actually registers with redundant servers with two A records over in Cloudflare. So these are both Cloudflare owned servers that are handling the proxying of this. So nothing is exposed in terms of my system itself other than what I showed you in the control panel.
Now let's talk about adding an extra layer of security that they have in here. I, this is just really amazing. They added this and offer it for free. I really recommend doing this if you have a service that you don't quite want publicly exposed, but you want it publicly exposed for certain people. And let's talk about how you can do restrictions on that. Let's go ahead and add another one such as our uptime Kuma, but let's make it different. You can have more than one, even if they point to the same thing. So we'll edit this one so we can just copy that, and make it easy. So this is uptime Kuma demo. And uh, let's go ahead and configure public host name, add one. And we'll call this one uptime secure Kuma. Same thing here. HTTP, so all parameters are the same here, but we're gonna call this one uptime secure because I wanna add an extra layer of security. So if I click this, it's gonna look just like the other one, but let's go ahead and go to our applications here. Add application, self-hosted, give it a name. The name's gonna be uptime secure Kuma, the domain uptime secure Kuma. Lawrence.video, there's no other path. We'll leave all this at default. There's a lot of details you can do in here, but for now, we'll just keep it pretty simple. And our policy name, we'll just keep the same name consistent here. And then we wanna choose how you want to authenticate. We can say anyone with an email. So they have to provide an email address to make this work. Or maybe we wanna get more specific. Emails ending in domain. But there's actually IP ranges, country, common name, valid certificate, lots of other login methods in here, but ending in domain. And so that domain would be at Lawrence Systems. Because I wanna share this only with my employees, for example. So anyone at lawrencesystems.com is gonna be able to get into this. So great, we'll just leave everything else at default. Like I said, there's a lot of things you can do in here. Uh, add application. So here's all the details. Now let's go to the domain and see what happens. Copy the link here. It seems to need a domain. So let's type in demo test at lawrencesystems.com and send me a code. I'm gonna wait for an email to come. As soon as that email comes, I'm gonna put that code in. Cloudflare has emailed me a code. We're gonna go ahead and hit sign in with this code. And now it brings me to the secure version of the Uptime Kuma. This is a really nice extra layer that you can put in front of things. So they can't just poke at it. They being anyone who wants to publicly find these addresses, they would need whatever those parameters are that you apply to add that extra layer of security. This is a really nice thing that they're doing because, you know, if there's a problem with one of your publicly hosted servers and you don't get it updated in time, this is one more layer in front of it that someone would have to get through in order to get to that server. But of course, with the added inconvenience that once your session expires, you would have to go through the same inconvenience as well. But it's a nice feature that you do have the option of adding. My overall feelings are that I like the Cloudflare tunnel system. There is a bug that I think is a little weird. I'm going to do a little testing and maybe report it to Cloudflare that I found. And that's if you create a tunnel and create a bunch of those different names, and then you delete the tunnel, but don't delete the names that were created. It seems to leave all those DNS entries and therefore you can't create a new tunnel like you would in a YouTube demo where you want to use the same names again and find out they don't work because it's already has those extra connections in there. Now, if you delete the names in the tunnel prior to deleting the tunnel, they delete perfectly fine. And it's probably not an issue you may run into unless you are uh, creating tunnels, deleting tunnels, and not deleting the attached domains you created within that tunnel. Uh, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. It's just something I notice as someone who's creating demos where I usually test all of this many times to make sure I can do the demo properly before creating content around it. But I thought it's worth mentioning if someone's from Cloudflare sees this and tells me what it is, that'd be great. Or if you have seen this problem and you know it's a known bug, or if those domains expire after a day of not having a tunnel attached to them, that would be interesting as well. That's the part I'm gonna be testing. Leave your thoughts in your comments down below. Uh, let me know how you like this service or if you've had some problems with it or you just really enjoy it. So far, all the testing I did, I didn't find anything buggy or weird about it it seems to be pretty simple to do. It has a lot more than I've covered. There's a million other features it can do, but I figure for most people, this is enough to get them started. I did that Bitwarden video the other day and people said, well, hey, isn't this good for using it for like self-hosted Bitwarden? Yes, as well as a lot of self-hosted web applications, which are pretty popular in the home lab. This is a great way to put things in front of it and also a great way to add a little bit of security in front of it as well with that, you know, registering only a domain or maybe a specific email that requires 
requires sending something to authorize it before it's viewable. I just like these little extra layers of security they put on there. And I think it's a really cool service that Cloudflare offers. Links down below to the documentation, lots to read through over there, or head over my forums for a more in-depth discussion. Thank you. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.